talked often every night. I was, I'm caught by surprise because I, I hadn't come here to talk. Um, um, but I just give a perspective from a physician point of view. So I look after children with uh, who need bone marrow transplant for various conditions. And uh, as I, I was already said is that um, 20, 25 percent of the patients only will get a donor from their families. There's a difference between a bone marrow transplant and a solid organ transplant like a liver or a kidney because in liver kidney transplant you just need a blood group match and practically anyone can donate for anyone if they're matching the same blood group. So the chances of finding a family donor for a solid organ transplant is very easy. Um, on the other hand, the bone marrow transplant, you know, you give a new immune system to the patient and um, that requires that the two donor and the patient are matching. And with the, with the families becoming shorter and short, smaller and smaller, you know, we, most of us now going for, you know, one child family. So I think the having a mad sibling or a, you know, brother, sister, a donor in future is going to be more and more less likely because the families are becoming smaller. So I think, uh, the option of unrelated bone marrow transplant is going to be the only, you know, option in the years to come. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the nature has made our system so diverse that, you know, the chances of matching, two people matching on the HLA type is, is very, very rare. You know, you, uh, you probably one in a million, you'll have a, a someone who's matching you completely. And that's why, you know, we need to have a very large registry in our country, although there are registries abroad, there are registries in U.S., there are registries in Europe. Uh, there are big registries, there are large registries, and but the chances of our people matching them is less because we we share a different ethnic background. Um, so our chances of finding a donor within our own community is more, you know, within our own region is more, and we need something big for our country. We need a big registry for our country. I mean, uh, you know, the, 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 the story of registries in India is very old, you know, I think about I, when I was a student um, some 20 years ago, we used to hear that AIMS is starting a registry. It, ha it should have been a government initiative because um, it's the need of the hour and unfortunately the plans got made and they never got executed and a lot of money was also promised and probably spent also, but it never came in picture. Um, but I, I, I thank Raghu, I don't, I, I can't see him here, but I, I thank Raghu, you know, Raghu, is, uh, Raghu has nothing to do with medicine. Raghu is, a, is an engineer by training and I don't know how he, uh, how he got into this, how he realized there's a need for this and how he jumped into this and, and the fantastic team he has, I think you see some of them around. Uh, is that they have really made a difference and, uh, you know, um, to, to enroll people on the registries is a challenge. Um, I think we heard our don our patient also saying that he, the donor must have gone a lot of pain. There's no pain to the donor, you know. Uh, it's like a blood transfusion, uh, blood donation. Yes, discomfort for a couple of days, but I think that discomfort is worth the life she he has gifted uh, to to Gayatri. So, uh, so I think there's a lot of awareness needed. That's why probably we are here, and uh, we hope and we should we should pray that we have at least a crore donors, you know, 10 million donors of our registry. Because if we do that, uh, probably we'll be able to find 50 to 60 percent of our patients will find a donor in the registry. But we, there's a long way to go. I think there are 1.5 lakhs. And a lot of effort has gone into it. Uh, there's a lot to be done. And I think all of us have to be advocates and all of us have to register ourselves, our nears and dears, and everyone in the community, uh, because that's what's going to make a difference uh, in somebody like Gatri's life. I thank you for your attention. Uh, can I have a question? Yes, please. Brain. Okay, so we are, we're talking about two different things now. I'm, 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 I don't want to go too much detail, but we are talking here about, we call it bone marrow transplant or hematopoietic stem cell transplant. So we are taking the stem cells from the donor, which have the capacity to produce blood cells, right? That's what we are talking about. It is a well-defined treatment, has been there for the last 60 years and has evolved and become better and better with time. The question you asked is about, not about hematopoietic stem cells, you're talking about, we call them mesenchymal stem cells. These are the cells which 
stem cells which have the capacity to generate and make other tissues like um, you know muscle tissue fatty tissue um, and uh, brain tissue for example neurons so that is a different uh, different entity there's a different field of medicine yes there's a little work going on that there as well but uh, it's not a, a recommended treatment but yes a lot of trials are going on and maybe in you know 10 years time we have you know that as a first line treatment for some of these conditions as well i forgot to mention i think see um i think we have to realize that how important it is that uh, you know for gayatri for example and so many people like her um you know these are the diseases not only cancers but there are lots of other conditions which can be treated with hematopoietic cell cell transplant or a bone marrow transplant is those are the those these are the conditions which do not have any other curative option right so it's is a question of life and death if i'm permitted to use the word you know so this is so this this is uh, such a you know beautiful thing to do for a donor to give somebody life which doesn't have any other effective treatment or a cure cure available at all so that's what makes it very very you know um um uh, life changing and heartening to see donors like uh, shiva to come forward and do it for us thank you yes so <clears throat> bone marrow donation uh, so as i said we are talking about giving stem cells which can produce blood and those stem cells are produced in the bone marrow all of us have bones and the bones have small small spaces inside which contain these stem cells and these stem cells can be taken from this bone marrow by two ways one is to take directly from the bone so in the backbone small needles we put and then take extract it from the from the bone or the other way which is the more commoner way i think which uh, she also has gone through is that we give them a growth factor just to increase the stem cell number as the number goes up it comes in the blood circulation the stem cells come in the blood circulation so then you then you connect them to a machine which collects the blood you it takes the blood from the person it rotates through that machine the stem cell collected the rest of the blood goes back to the patient uh, back to the donor so the donor has to kind of lie for 3 to 4 hours on the bed he is he is awake and he is doing whatever he is watching tv just that his blood is going through a machine is getting stem cells getting separated and the blood comes comes back both modalities are um you know there are there are positives and negatives in either either whether you take from here or you take from here um and depending on case to case basis we will recommend okay it's better to take from here for this patient or it's better to take from here for this patient but at the end of the day it's the is the ease and the comfort of the donor which is taken into consideration you know if he is not comfortable digging bone marrow okay then it's fine he can give stem cells from his vein so both ways you can take it um uh, the the majority of the collections which datri has done and which uh, are from the peripheral stem cells because it's a little easier method and you know there's nothing much involved there's no nsc's involved and it's just a procedure for 2 3 hours day care procedure come and go what i'm happy to declare also today is that they have also helped us with the first bone marrow harvest from here from an unrelated donor who fortunately belongs to bangalore and donated his bone marrow from his bone and you know it's, it's an anesthetic procedure we need to take them to ot anesthetize them take the marrow out and then they they are admitted for a couple of days and they have been inst instrumental in that also and i think they are now going to going to you know give that as a option as well to a lot of donors who are willing for donation so after the donation how much time to reproduce so uh, the, so so you know the the beauty of bone marrow is that it is a renewable source right so you you have you have stimulated the marrow you have collected the extra stem cells you still are left with more than what you require for your body so there's no question of you know you have lost something and you know you, when you take stem cells from here from the bone marrow which i was talking about so you know we give them a um, blood forming supplement for a month or so like iron tablet for a month so that they are you know their bone bone may uh, this but but the stem cell number is replenished in 2 to 3 days because you know it's it's a it's a very fast growing stem you know now you know part of our body so 2 to 3 days they are back to normal but when it's not at all so there is there has been see we have been Uh, we are quite young in this field uh, we means india is quite young in this field um, but there have been thousands of donors who have donated abroad and there is now uh, there is now data for decades together 20 30 years data is there and there hasn't been any untoward side effect 
to the um, to the donor at all. In, I mean, long term. Short term, yes, you know, when you give them this growth factor, they can have a little uncomfort, a little pain, especially in the bones, because the bones are a little working a little hard for those two, three days. But it settles. Once you collect the stem cells in two, three days' time, they are absolutely fine. Um, age limit is, so uh, there is no age limit for donation when we talk about donation per se. But there is age limit for unrelated donors. So if, if you are taking bone marrow either from here or from the stem cells, from a family donor, it doesn't matter what the age is. I have taken even marrows from 11-month-old babies for their siblings, right? So for that, there's no age limit. It, it's, a, you know, it's, it's as safe as it's 11 months has donated for a sibling, so it's no problem at all. We have taken marrow, you know, stem cells or marrows from even 70, 72 year olds for their family members. But from the unrelated donor point of view, unrelated donor means that he has to be adult. I mean, you can't take, a child cannot be unrelated donor for someone because he has not, he cannot give consent for anything. So you have to take consent from unrelated donor. So 18 to 55, I think you have kept. 50. So there are different registries have kept different, you know, age uh, limits. Most of them start from 18 to some, some take out to 55 also. I think that's just kept to 50. So, you know, this is the average, you know, the age they can enroll and donate for unrelated donors. No, I mean, uh, it's the registries enrolling of 50.